Hello and welcome to this video where, where I would like to go through some examples um, involving combined loading of shallow surface foundations. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is I am going to consider a rectangular foundation 2 by 4 meters uh, on top of a soil. Um, so let's let's draw the soil domain first and I am going to make that uh, 20 by 20. So like that and then something like we could make it 8 high. So that's my soil domain, and I might use a uh, more coulomb. Uh, no, let's say a Tresca material for that. Um, with, the, with the default parameters at SU of 100 and a gamma of 18. In the previous video, I showed how to um, introduce a variation of SU, basically an increase of strength with depth. I am not going to do that here. I'm just going to stick with, with the default parameters. And um, then I would like to place a foundation 4 by 2 meters on top of this soil surface. And I would like to subject this foundation to a general combination of vertical, horizontal and moment loading. And um, question is how to do that and so let me just first before I do anything draw the area in which the foundation uh, uh, draw draw the foundation so let me just switch to XY view so now I'm viewing it from the top the soil surface from the top and I want a foundation for two by four meters and let's make it four meters in the X direction and then two meters in the Y direction so the bottom right coordinate is going to be uh, 2, it's going to be somewhere down here, 2 comma minus 1. And then the top left corner is at, is at minus 2 comma 1. So like this. So this is 4 meters. I can always click the lines to check the dimensions and this is 2 meters. And uh, I could then use a rigid block um, to model the foundation except that it's a bit of a problem uh, applying moment loading to, to, a, uh, uh, to a solid so what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to actually use a shell to model the foundation. So select the area there and then press shell. And we have uh, various options when it comes to shells. The basic option is a rigid shell, but you can have a rigid plastic shell. And then there's various sort of yield conditions, Mises for steel, of course. And there is Johansson and Nielsen if you want to do concrete shells or concrete plates but the rigid shell will serve the purpose in uh, for this example here um, and I'm going to subdivide that so I want to apply a moment about about the y-axis basically uh, so have it have the moment um, in the most optimal way uh, in relation to the dimensions of the foundation. So I'm going to subdivide the foundation before I do anything else with a line from here to here. So with a line from 0, 1 down to uh, 0, minus 1. So I have now two parts of the foundation and applying load could be done. I could, I could draw a line here as well and then apply a point load at the center. Uh, or what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to use a line load to represent the um, 
uh, let's say a vertical load could also be a, a horizontal load but just let's just say a vertical load like that so obviously this is two meters this is this is a line load distributed load kilonewton per meter this is two meters so whatever result I get out I should multiply by two or I could also make the intensity of this of this reference load this multiplier load 0.5 so that the resultant would be the resultant force would be the 0.5 times the two meters that is to say one um, and let's put standard fixities on that now so that's that's vertical loading so that's it can be done with with a rigid foundation as well and it's it's not uh, too complicated to do and of course we could have a we could have a uh, say a component in the, in the y direction as well if we wanted oh, um, something like that so an inclined load but let's just stick with a purely vertical load uh, and then so that's one case we could consider and then we could also consider the case where we have pure moment loading so um, the moment again as a if you if you if you press the line basically where mo where um, load has been applied there's four components to a load x y and z forces and then a moment about this local uh, the axis are defined by the line and um, again this is a, a moment in kilonewton meter per meter so it's a distributed moment so you wanna as well uh, multiply that uh, or, uh, by by uh, two uh, once the results are in, or alternatively, just set it to um, consider to 0.5 because 0.5 times two is is uh, of course um, equal to one. So you see these moment arrows here, and it's a bit difficult to see which direction it actually turns in. But if you pick the solid and then you can either make this transparent or hide it or so you see the moment is, is about this axis in this direction basically corresponding to the right hand rule in this case um, so the local coordinate system you can see that as well is 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 here so minus 0.5 corresponds to a moment in in this direction using the right hand rule okay so that's that's pure vertical and pure moment and then we could of course have a combination of the two um, um, we could have something like um, well why don't we say minus 0.5 and minus 0.5 so like that and then we are left to do the analysis and um, let's see how that goes and I'm again using the mixed element here and just a thousand elements just to just for demonstration purposes and with mesh adaptivity as usual and we can call this V call this M and call this VM. Okay, and let's see how it goes. So that is how it went. So a vertical load of 4838, so 4.8 meganewtons, a moment capacity of 3.7 mega newton meters and a combined capacity of um, well moment equal to vertical equal to 2.87 uh, mega newton or mega newton meters respectively for the vertical load uh, vertical force and the moment uh, respectively and let's see the results you can see the mesh has been adapted and 
So this is the purely vertical load. You can see the failure mechanism is not completely vertical. There is a bit of, it's a bit unsymmetric, basically due to the, to the fact that the mesh has been, the mesh, the adapted mesh that's been generated, it has become slightly unsymmetric. Uh, and so there is a tendency for the footing basically to turn over, even though it is subjected to purely vertical loading. This is actually exactly what you see if you do full-scale tests of this type here as well. The moment, um, it looks as expected, right? I mean, basically the foundation rotates. Try some shear dissipation. Um, so that is, is quite expected. And the VH as well, oh, the VM, sorry, will, will have a rotation as well. So, um, yeah less of a rotation than pure moment possibly um, but it definitely rotates quite considerably so um, that's basically how to do combined loading of shallow foundations